Rob Porter is no longer working in Trump's White House. He was a Trump administration senior aide who has been accused of physically abusive behavior by both of his wives. Now, he worked very closely with Trump's chief of staff, John Kelly. And when these accusations were first made public by a report written by the Daily Mail, John Kelly decided to defend his pal instead of waiting to see whether or not, hey, maybe a this is a really bad idea. So uh, Kelly stood up for him, calling Porter, quote, a man of true integrity and honor and a, quote, trusted professional. Kelly also encouraged Porter to stay and fight instead of walking away from his job. Now, uh, John Kelly got a considerable amount of backlash as a result. And according to reports, he was pushed toward uh, releasing a, another statement, uh, backtracking what he had originally said. The new statement goes as follows. There is no place for domestic violence in our society. I stand by my previous comments of the of the Rob Porter that I have come to know since becoming chief of staff and believe every individual deserves the right to defend their reputation. I accepted his resignation earlier today and I will ensure a swift and orderly transition. Look, if he actually believes that all three women are lying and he's worked with Rob Porter, I get that he wants to defend his friend and colleague if he is absolutely positive. But I don't know how he would be absolutely positive. And in a role like that, you do have to be conscious of the message that you're sending out as the chief of staff to the president of the United States. If it, someone's been accused of committing these terrible crimes and you got the picture of his first wife with the black eye and they accuse him of choking and punching and, and, and there's three of them. Can we at least get the second statement first where you go, well, look, he's a friend of mine and I believe him, but these are terrible crimes and so let's, See how the process unfolds. At least give us that instead of he is a man of true integrity and honor. How do you know that? So again, I want to go back to what more can you expect from people working in this administration? And what I mean by that is it wasn't long ago that we had a Senate race involving a literal child molester, a pedophile, and Republicans were supporting him because they did not want to elect a Democrat instead. Okay, that just happened, that wasn't long ago. So it doesn't surprise, they're a tribe, they, they always defend their own. I'm actually surprised that he released a statement somewhat backtracking what he originally said. No, I'll tell you why, and it, so that's really important. But I wanna do the Orrin Hatch quotes because there's another Republican senator defending Rob Porter. After we give you that, I'm gonna tell you what the real drama here is. Because it isn't what you see on the surface. Okay, so uh, Orrin Hatch also, by the way, uh, decided to defend Rob Porter. Apparently, Rob Porter used to work for Orrin Hatch, and here's what he had to say. It's incredibly discouraging to see such a vile attack on such a decent man. It's almost as if they had punched him and choked him instead of the other way around. He continues, shame on any publication that would print this and shame on the politically motivated, morally bankrupt character assassins that would attempt to sully a man's good name. And Orrin Hatch never walked back from those statements. In fact, he doubled down several times. Take a look at this video. What was your conversation like with the minister? Well, you know, I'm somebody who, who believes in helping people. And uh, it, was a, it was a conversation to let him know that if he needs help in the future, I'll try to be there. Thank you, Senator. He's a good guy, no question. I don't understand. I really don't understand what happened there. Do you believe these allegations against him? Do you believe the women? I don't believe them all, but I, I, I think there's enough there that you, you have to take it very seriously. I don't believe them all. How does he uh, differentiate between those he believes and those he doesn't believe? <laughs> Look, he, he should have led with the last part, which is you gotta take it very seriously. These are really serious allegations. Now, is it possible, I'm not just saying this, is it possible that all three women are lying? Anything is possible, it's, it is possible. And is, should we throw them in jail without a trial? No, you should give them due process. Progressives believe in our justice system and in due process. Is it likely that all three women are lying? No. So I would, if I was Orrin Hatch, I wouldn't come out guns blazing with he's the greatest guy in the world and why are these 
uh, women attacking this poor guy, mm -hmm. I might want to reserve some judgment before I figure out if he actually punched her in the face or not. So three pieces of evidence that I would want to look at myself before releasing any type of statement. Uh, piece of evidence number one, black eye photo, a little damning. Uh, but who knows, maybe you can rationalize things to yourself and, and make the argument that she got the black eye from something else. Okay, fair. Uh, the second ex-wife uh, got a court order or a protective order against him. I'd want to see that protective order. When did she get it? Right? So divorces are messy, right? But she didn't get but, it in the but, middle of a divorce. No, 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 hold on. No, I know. Yeah. But, uh, you know, and I tell you that a thousand times. But these are two different women. One get, uh, saying punch in the face, the other one getting the protective order before divorce. She was so scared of him. She's like, you got to protect me from my husband. And then the third woman comes out and says, reaching out to the two wives, I've been having a relationship with this guy. How do I get out? Because this this guy is abusive, and I don't know how to get out. You got to help me. Right. That's a lot of evidence. It doesn't mean he's guilty. It doesn't mean we put him in jail. But it does mean if you're a senator or you're John Kelly, that you should exercise some caution before you go out there and go. He's the world's greatest guy. I can't believe these women are doing this to him. And the third piece of evidence that I think is important to keep in mind is that his second ex-wife wrote a blog post about him last year. He didn't write a blog post about him yesterday. Last year, didn't even name him, but reporters did some digging and they found that blog and asked her questions about it. Yeah, now so that's there. Now let's talk about the stuff that's going on behind the scenes. Because in my experience, reporters don't do much digging. Um, Oppo research happens and they get handed a story and then they go, oh, look at what I found, a blog post. Well, you're right about that, that's for sure. Yes. So, um, Who's doing Oppo research on Rob Porter? Not the Democrats, they don't care. And that's not their business as to who's winning the internal White House struggles. No, it's other people in the White House doing it. And so an anonymous woman comes out, things are leaked to the Daily Mail, that's weird, mm -hmm. right? And then an old blog post is found, that's got all of these have Oppo research written all over them. It doesn't mean that he didn't do it. Okay, Oppo research finds out things you might have done, right? And so, so what's the the drama behind the scenes? Well, Rob Porter's on John Kelly's team. John Kelly has imposed order in the White House. Part of that order is you don't just walk into the Oval Office and just go, "Hey, can you believe Breitbart wrote this? Let's go change U.S. policy." And you don't go and say, "Hey, you know, Kushner would like a deal in China, and so can you change U.S. policy so we all get rich?" Okay, and so that's driving everyone else at the White House crazy because they're used to that and they're used to the circus and they want the circus back in town. And then there are guys like Corey Lewandowski who's coming out now and saying, tiss, 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 I can't believe what's going on with Rob Porter. Lewandowski was fired for assaulting a female reporter as if he cares, right? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, so all of a sudden, he's the defender of women, mm, not buying it, right? Why? He wants John Kelly's job. Meanwhile, we are finding out from Vanity Fair and other sources that Ivanka and Kushner have got their knives out. I reported on this a couple of days ago. And they don't like that John Kelly's blocking access to, to uh, Trump. Mm -hmm. So here comes. And so Rob Porter, one of the top allies for John Kelly, down and out. Mission accomplished. Yeah, so this is a tangled web because the. Corey Lewandowski's of the world also don't do so well with the Ivanka Trumps of the world, right? That's right. That's so right. there's a little bit of a beef there, and it's it's interesting if they are in cahoots in order to you know get Porter out and to get John Kelly out. It's an interesting alliance, and we'll see how it plays out. But keep in mind, this is obviously speculation. No, no, but that's 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 how they've been running this three ring circus from day one. Bannon is. In alliance and working against Reince Priebus at the same time. Mm -hmm. So he'll gang up with Reince against Kushner, then turn around and gang up with Cohn against Priebus because everyone's in it for themselves. So when Porter gets cut and he's bleeding out, he's gushing from the neck politically, mm -hmm. right? He's like, wait, was it Corey? Was it Ivanka? Who did it? Oh, God. <laughs> right. Right. Too late, already dead. 
politically. So and Ivanka, by the way, Ivanka and Jared Kushner are in charge of the transition to basically fill the role that is left behind by Rob Porter. Oh yeah, I mean that's like putting Dick Cheney as the head of your vice presidential selection committee. <laughs> so, so that's part of the reason why John Kelly came out so aggressively the first time defending Porter, because he knows that this is a hit job, right or wrong, and it looks like it is right. Right, but it is a hit job nonetheless. Both things can happen at the same time. Mm -hmm. So uh, he, that's why he's like, "Oh, Porter's a good guy. What do you guys? Oh, God damn it, he bled out already." Uh, so then he puts out a second statement. I mean, I guess domestic violence is a bad thing, but I'm not sure he did it. Uh, oh well, I'm on my own. Oh no, who's behind me? <laughs> <laughs> so Ivanka and Jared definitely doing a power play. Lewandowski has his own agenda. I don't know if they're working together, but. The most important part of all of this giant story is when they get Kelly, and they will, because Trump is likes drama. He loves drama. He's a reality host. So and he likes firing people. He used to do it once a week. And and John Kelly has not kissed his ass enough on television lately, and he's bothered by that. And then the other part of this drama that I, you know, I brought up in the earlier story, and that's relevant here. Then they go, Did you know Rob Porter was sleeping with Hope Hicks? Now Trump, there are rumors, likes Hope Hicks, okay? Mm -hmm. So then he gets furious and Vanity Fair reporting today that he, he said he was effing pissed about the Porter statements, okay? Mm -hmm. That Kelly and Hope Hicks defended him. Why is he pissed? Never cared about sexual assault or anything like that before. He's pissed because of Hope Hicks. So they, they know that, you think Ivanka doesn't know which buttons to press with daddy, okay? Oh I don't even wanna think about it. Anyway, okay. so they press a couple of buttons and Trump's like, ah, who do I fire? Ah. And once Kelly is gone, then chaos comes back. And it is not a ladder, it is a pit. And so when chaos reigns again at the White House, and we're, if not weeks, if not days, we're weeks away from that when Kelly's gone, then we're gonna go back to absolute madness. So threatening oh. North Korea. I mean, uh, like this is yeah. the relative stability. Oh, the, yeah, the stability is just. I mean, it's. I'm bored. I don't know what else <laughs> to talk about on the show. I, I, <laughs> but I'm telling you, man, if you think it's bad now, wait till Kelly goes. That's when it goes in the hyperdrive of insanity. If you want to get the whole Young Turks show every single day, become a member. Tytnetwork.com/slash/join. And once you do, you'll be saying, "You know, I'm like a smart person." Or you might say, "I think it's weird." Or you might say, oops. No, that won't be that one. It won't be that one. It'll be great, trust me. TYTnetwork.com slash join.